We're back in the saddle again. Should we start off every pod with one of us singing a song, the song? relevant, relevant song? to what we're doing? Relevant to the topic? Should be cool. Or to the topics? You're yeah. a music guy, right? You said that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I try to be a music guy. How's, your, sing- how's your singing voice? <laughs> it depends on who you ask. Like, as far as I'm concerned, well, it's, it's on point. <laughs> It's really good. It's really good. You're one of those guys on American Idol who's like, I've never had any personal training. Right? <laughs> William Hong or whatever his name right. was back in the day. Be- believe it or not, I've, I've never had... This is all natural abilities. This is so. all natural abilities. All right, we're going to jump right into it. We're a little late to get started here. I uh, had a phone call I was dealing with, and me and Chris were rapping a little bit. So here we go. That's something we could really do. We could jump on and rap, like take it back to the old school days. It's coming. It's coming. Mr. Bryler. What's your bi- we talked movies before. We talked like five movies that you've seen a bunch of times. What's your biggest guilty pleasure movie? A movie that you have no business being a big fan of. If it makes you feel a little girly, if it makes you feel a little insecure, whatever the case is, what's that movie for you? Or that if you said like I you stood up. Okay. I really like this movie and people would laugh at you for saying it. Well, see, I don't know that I would get laugh. Well, I don't know. Okay, so Little Monsters with Howie Mandel, right? Don't even he, know that movie. Uh, you got to look at it. Like, he played, like, it's 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 so good, it's hard for me to explain what it's all about. It's a movie from, I believe, either late 80s, early 90s. You got to look it up. It's like a classic kids movie for, like, guys our age. Interesting. Um, How do that, I, I've never even heard the title. Yeah, I, I think it's supposed to be a, a children's movie, but honestly, I just tried to watch it with my kids, like, I don't know, maybe like a year ago, and you know how it is when you re-watch something that you used to watch when you are a kid, and you do it as an adult with your kids, and you're like, shit, this isn't for kids. Like, what what That's the hell's funny. going on here? It's one of those movies, so, um, it's not yeah. An, it's not animated, it's like real... No, it's real. Howie okay. Mandel is, is okay. one of... Oh, and Fred Savage. Fred Savage is the kid, so you know, that kind of gives you an idea of what era this yeah, was, right. you know, Fred, Fred, Savage. Fred Savage was in his heyday at that point he was on top he was making moves yeah Yeah, he was Um, like he was the dude you know this is funny to me i i thought of this question i I think i i might have saw this question online somewhere and some of the answers were pretty cool and funny and stuff but like i don't know man like i like what i like i don't really really consider it a guilty pleasure but the the first i could probably if i really dove into this in my head might be able to come up with a couple better ones but the first one that came to mind for me sister act one and two that's dude, awful. Dude, <laughs> Whoopi, <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg getting down as a nun, like, singing. Dude, we're, we're, we're hemorrhaging viewers right now, after, right a, after you said that. I'm a fan. Every time it's on TV, I'll watch Sister it. Sister act, wow. Dude, the second one, especially where she takes the ragtag kids and turns them into, like, the best choir in the nation. And Okay. I used to, put, I used to have one or two of the songs from that movie on my iPod. Well, I, I will say that that classifies as a guilty pleasure. For I sure. think so. And then I don't know if this is I don't know if this is even like allowed other than the fact that it's like it's a pretty much all female cast and written and directed by women. But it's seriously I I would put it in the discussion of one of the funniest movies out like in the last I don't remember when it came out ten or fifteen years maybe Bridesmaids. Dude, I love. If you've never seen it, have you seen Bridesmaids? I think I have seen that. Kristen, Kristen, Kristen Wiig. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think Melissa I have. Melissa McCarthy. Seen. It's that's funny. That one is funny for sure. Hilarious. It's that that might be what my wife says is her favorite movie. She's a huge Kristen Wiig fan. They're actually both yeah. from like the same, close to the same hometown in upstate New York. So she's always liked her. But um, yeah, I've seen that. That would that could go on my list of movies. I could see that. Be, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I could get down with that one. So I don't know if that's like a guilty pleasure movie. Like I said, it's it's all pretty much all women. It's honors around like weddings and like bachelor bachelorette parties so like you can't really like put yourself into the movie like you can with some other ones that that i like a lot but uh and i think it's really funny anyway so there you go i'm a sister act guy i'll 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 shout it from a mountain and uh by the way my dad was a big fan of your big trouble on little china answer see you see now you probably feel compelled to watch it i'm sure i do i do and he was telling me a little bit about it and he's like oh that's a good pick by chris right there. <laughs> good pick good pick. Yeah, I, I knew your dad was a good guy so anyway it's I'll, I'll have to put it on my list i'll have to put it on my list all yeah. right let's shift to some real stuff man i like this pickup more than any pickup Michigan has gotten over the last month and a half. Miles Pollard, the four-star, three-star, wherever you look, 
tight up uh, tight end cornerback from Tennessee picked Michigan today. This kid had like 40 offers and a lot of big ones. And if you look over his timeline on Twitter over the last handful of months, he's got, you know, recruiting graphics from all the big boys. I mean, Alabama sending him stuff, Oklahoma sending him stuff, Auburn sending him stuff, Tennessee certainly down there where he lives. And Michigan was able to win out. I mean, so now you've got – I put a picture up too of Pollard standing next to Will Johnson. You've got two guys yeah. now at 6'2", long, rangy, both can run, both shine on offense as well. So they've got really good ball skills. They're they're similar kids, you know, like hardworking, grinder kids, mature can lead the recruiting class a little bit. Will Johnson has been that guy for a while now, but Miles Pollard's another kid who could jump in and kind of be a wingman maybe if you if, if you look at it that way just because of the way they conduct themselves. I think this is a this is a massive get. I know he's not rated that high on 24/7. I think Rivals has him a little bit higher. But again, we've talked about this before. There there's a lot that goes into what I feel about how a recruit is is looked at and when you see the 40 offers and you see the big time schools that are on that offer list to me that that speaks volumes right that's just it right you 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 take a look at some of the like that's the first thing i do when i hear about these guys i go on look at their offer list Mm -hmm. see who else is in pursuit and clearly you know there were a lot of big time programs that were in pursuit for a reason and so it's another one of those things where I, i think you know the combination of him and will johnson it's, it's a really solid addition to the 2022 class. Again, we'll see how it pans out on the field, but I'm certainly not upset about this one. And you're right, out of all the commitments, you know, Michigan has had a string of commitments here over the last several weeks. This is one of the commitments that I'm for sure the most excited about. Yeah, this is the biggest one. This is the biggest one when you look at his, his profile and who he's got an offer from and who were his finalists. I mean, he was down to Michigan, Auburn, and Oklahoma. I mean, right. that you know, those are two other big-time programs. But on his offer list, I mean, he had Alabama, Florida, Florida State, uh, Miami, Mississippi State, Oklahoma, Oregon, Penn State, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, Washington, Wisconsin, West Virginia. I mean, he those are – you know, aside from a couple, you know, Georgia, Clemson, like that's that's all the big time schools or a lot right. of the big time schools. Anytime Alabama's on the list, I'm like, all right, legit. Like, you know, and I don't know if he was able able to commit to Alabama like today if he wanted to, but like I said, they they offered him. And when you look down his his Twitter feed, he's he's got stuff being sent to him by the Alabama staff. That's yeah. another indication. As again, as a person who covered recruiting for a long time, it's cool if a kid says that he got an offer from a school. But if they're not getting mail, if they're not getting attention, if they're not getting invited to games, if they're not getting the option to come for an official visit, if they're not getting phone calls from the coaches, they don't. They might as well not have the offer. And you see that from every program in the country, Michigan included. They'll send an offer out. They'll, they'll put some feelers out, learn a little bit. Maybe they see a kid in person. I, I remember a very specific kid that I went down and saw in Florida was listed at 6'1", and I went down and saw him in person, and he was like visibly, noticeably shorter than me. And I was yeah. like, "That's a big deal when you're talking about." He was a corner. That's a big deal when you're talking about that position specifically. And you know, he ended up. He had a bunch of offers listed on his page, and he went to a school that was nowhere near the ballpark of some of those schools. So right. you see that, and I think that's important to look at. You know, not only where his his ranking is right now, which I think I think it'll probably go up. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a consensus four star by the end of the cycle, but uh, it's the offer list, it's the legitimate attention, it's his finalists, it's where he's visited, who wants him. So this is a great get. This is a yep. great get. Now you've got you've got your two lockdown corners on the outside. You've got Cody Jones also from Tennessee who can play the nickel. You're starting to look and see a pretty a pretty impressive secondary forming in that in that twenty twenty two. And class. I think I mean, right now overall they're top ten class, right? Or they're, they're, they're somewhere I, maybe either at the, or within. Yeah, right around there, 10, 11, yeah. 12. I, I, may, I don't actually, full disclosure, I haven't looked today. I mean, that's obviously another another recruiting service. We'll get on the horn with John Garcia, our our recruiting director at SI. I actually want to talk to him about Mario A. Eugenio. We can ask a little bit about Pollard as well and just kind of get a feel for where Michigan is at recruiting-wise over the last, like you said, several weeks where they've now landed, what is it, eight guys, I think, five in June. and yeah. And three this month so far in uh, Colston Loveland, Mario A. Eugenio, and today Miles Pollard. And I, I don't think they're done this month. I think they might get five, six, or seven guys even this month. It kind of sounds yeah. like I know Dylan Tatum from West Bloomfield is looking at making a decision. Dion Walker um, from Cast Tech, the big D tackle, is 
I mean, he's talking about these guys like he's already a commit. It's kind of funny on social yeah, media. Yeah, like re- referring to them as, their, yeah, as his teammates. teammates. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's obviously really high on Michigan and has been, and they've really turned up the heat on him. Um, and uh, Kobe Albert put Michigan in his top three today. Uh, Dylan Bell, versatile athlete, wide receiver, uh, running back kind of kid from Texas is getting closer to a decision. So Michigan's in pretty good shape with quite a few guys. Again, it's hard when you look at what's going on in Columbus. I know that you'll you'll see it. The the those real fun guys at parties, you know, when Michigan gets a commitment, they're like, "Cool, look at Ohio State." Like, right. yeah, I know Ohio State's kicking ass right now, but like, you know, try to find the positives in these kids that Michigan's getting. But I'm not. I also I'm not going to sugarcoat it and say like, you know, that tight end that they got from Idaho, championship. I'm just, I'm not going to do that. So, right. The Michigan coaches wanted some of these guys, maybe more than some other staffs, but you know, I'll call a spade a spade. But today. I think the Pollard commitment's big. I really do. I don't care if there's only three stars next to his name at 24-7. Um, I like him on tape a lot. I like what he's about. And like I said, those offers are are pretty impressive. I, I We've talked about this before. I don't know if we've talked about it on a podcast, but I know like playing the NCAA video games, Michigan off the list. All right, Michigan is off the list. Who's your final five? Where are you taking your official visits, and where do you think you would end up going if you were oh, a bl- shit. if you're a blue chipper? You've got thirty okay. offers, like forty offers, like a Miles Pollard. You can take your OVs. You can settle in and pick a school that's not Michigan. What are those five schools look like for you? And also, are you going to be one of these guys now that you're 37 years old, where you're like going to Hawaii? <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, you know, I'm like, just in, embarking on all of the like old person. Va- like, I'll be in Florida for a while, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, is this is this a, is this an answer where you can give like a? All right, if I was a football player, this is what I'm thinking about. Are you just looking at this as like? Well, I'm, I'm thinking, a dad and I want a vacation. <laughs> I'm thinking back when you know I would play the game. There were other schools that I would play for. Uh, Florida State was one of those schools. Now I know that they're a dumpster fire, but when Florida State is good, like I find it hard not to root for them as like a secondary team i just i i like i like the helmet i like the low right i like the chop in the stadium i like i like the whole deal i feel like when florida state is on point that's a that's a tough place to go and win um yeah man i, f- I feel like i would have to think about that one a little bit i f- okay. I, I almost feel like a, a high rated recruit right now and i've really <laughs> got a like decision. I've, I've you know my whittling it down to five is not easy yeah it's uh how about so- you where are you going so I've always had a soft spot for Oregon. I have. I mean, sure. The, the uniforms, the Nike stuff, the – everybody's doing that offense now. But when I was younger and playing the video games, like their offense was innovative and they always had a fast quarterback and I always thought that was sweet. So that that would probably be one that I would give a hard look to. Um, you know, I've always – I've always really liked Texas. Is Texas okay. Is, Texas is all white look. Yep. I think it's just clean. And I, I'll, honestly, like when I think back to the video games, that was a big part. Like who's got the uniforms that I can shuffle through and put together a different combination every week when I'm playing. I, I've always just been such a Michigan fan that I didn't yeah. care that much about other programs. Oregon is one that jumps to mind right away. I always liked – I've always been I, – I worked at Nike when I was in high school. I always liked wearing Nike shoes when I played sports. I've always just loved the brand, and they kind of were the you know the pioneer with the uniforms and the branding of Nike. So, like I said, they've always had a soft spot. Um, trying to think of some of the schools I've tried out when I did like a my you know my player type yeah. of thing on. I I remember I used to do like Virginia Tech. I think maybe because I'm like oh I'm gonna be a dual threat QB like Michael Vick or something. I don't know. There's all you <laughs> I'd, know. I throw I throw Georgia on the list for sure. Georgia okay. for me. See, yeah. Georgia was I'd never, add Georgia. Georgia was never one for me. I never I've never been a fan of the dogs. I don't really particularly like well that's because you're that's because you're allergic that's what that's what your (laughs) issue is i've got i love the the all the black uniform or the black top that's got like the dog color or the dog collar uh sort of emblem around it that's pretty sweet okay yeah not bad not bad i've 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 done the i've gone the west virginia route before okay same type of deal cool uniforms big time offense back in the day texas Um, tech maybe go on be a red raider I never really did Texas Tech, but obviously, if you were a, an air raid, you know, throw it around quarterback, that wasn't a bad way to go. Um, maybe I, did I ever do USC? I don't, I don't know. Maybe Washington. I've always kind of liked their stadium and the setup that they've got out in the Pacific Northwest. But it was always so much about just throwing on the winged helmet. Like I mean, yeah. the second I would get the new NCAA game every year, it was fire up a dynasty with Michigan, get rolling on it, and go. Well, I, then, I told. 
I told you I was either playing as them or I was playing against them, and I was like out for vengeance because they didn't recruit me. <laughs> yeah. Like that's how it worked. Or I would, or I would back it way, way up and take like one of the worst teams on the game and just try to make them better. Yeah, like I did. Marshall or Wyoming, or, Rice, yeah, 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 Tulane, whatever. Some, some under the radar school like that. So that's a fun thing, man. And the 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 fun thing about it is that that game is coming back. That game is coming back, and it's not. Gonna I will be finally easy. buy a new uh, a new console. I've been trying. Finally. They're still sold out. I try every time I see a little drop on on Twitter or something. I'll log in and it's sold out already. So still yeah. don't have the new Xbox, but you can get one on Facebook for like not much over regular asking price. I don't. I don't think I'm going to do that yet. But uh, I'll wait till the game comes out. But when that when that NCAA game comes back out or whatever it's called, it might not be called. Might not be called that. Um. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes when I can get my hands on a new system. Uh, real quick on Miles Pollard, since we're talking about him, we got a question here from a listener. What's the deal with this kid being rated so low? Seems like he's a stud. Well, first of all, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a bias when you see three star. You think a kid sucks. That's like just factually not true. Like that's still a really, really good football player. You know, you're talking to like one of the top four or five hundred kids in the entire country. Like that's a good player. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I get what you're saying. It's he, he's not the offer list. The rating doesn't seem to match the offer list. When you've got 40 offers, and those, some of those offers are the ones we rattled off, I'm, I'm with you. I typically tend to think that that kid would be a four-star kid. And you look at the measurables, and you watch his tape, and you're like, that, 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 yeah, what, what, are, what are they looking at here? So I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't really give you an answer on that. I don't, you know, Rivals does has a, has, have him as a four-star. Uh, 24-7 doesn't. Uh, ESPN doesn't. I don't really care much about ESPN's rankings, but still, they, they're there and apparently part of that composite algorithm that 24-7 uses. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a great a great answer for you there, uh, Barry. I, don't, I, I think he looks good. He was a coveted kid that a lot of people wanted, and Michigan had him at the top of their list for a long time. Um, that's another thing I think that factors in when you're looking at who Michigan gets. Is this really a kid – that they have actively identified, recruited, and wanted for a long time. If that's the case, then there's value there, I think. And, again, I'll, I'll not calling on the kid to call out the kid, but Jaden Denegal, the quarterback, comes to Michigan, works out, gets offered, and commits on the spot. Like, that's not option number one. I'm sorry. It's just not. Yeah. Like, I, I don't care what you say. It's not. You know, there's there were, there were quarterbacks who had offers for a lot longer. Um, Colin – was it Colin – Connor? Connor Harrell. Connor Harrell, yeah. And, came in uh, for his visit. Yeah. Nate Johnson came in for his visit, and within a week or two of visiting, they were projected to go somewhere else. Like that, that's how you get to a Jaden Denegal down the list. Again, maybe he turns into the best quarterback to ever play at Michigan. I'm not going to bang on the kid, but it, it, you just, it is what it is. It, you, call it, you call it like it plays out. When you see it play out that way, it's, it's common sense. It's obvious that he wasn't at the top of Michigan board, and that's okay. I mean, not yeah. everybody gets exactly who they want all the time. You gotta you gotta find value in kids for different reasons, and you get who you can get. And you know, I mean, we talked about it a lot of times. If I was the best quarterback in the country, I don't think I'm going to Michigan. Not I'm yet. Just, you know, not, not yet. I'm not doing that. You know, you can look at the numbers and look at how they're used and look at what they've accomplished. And you know, there's better options out there. It's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to say those words, but it's true. And you know. Hardcore Michigan fans won't say those words, but it, you know it is what it is. How painful is it for you to say stuff like that, Chris? You're, can I say can I say something that you won't get mad about? You're a little slappier than me. I, Go ahead, you say that. Um, Mr. Well, Nine, Mr. I, you know, Nine, I, Mr. Nine I, and Three. See, I don't know that slappy is the right word, but I would say I love, I, I love calling I, people. Slaps. I I am more inclined to. Uh, I don't know. See a little more of the, uh, you know, the sunlight or the, you know, the 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 what's possible. I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit more positive on the team. I would say. Okay. Yeah, Maybe that's, that's only probably. slightly though. I, I I view you and I as two. We're pretty fairly close. realistic. You know what I mean. And, and at the very least, put some thought into what we're saying and why it could be the case and can it can make a compelling argument. Yeah, we were we're gonna get into this topic. This is gonna be what we close with. But uh, what was my exact what was my exact text to you earlier today? Um, um, I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. Your your glasses aren't glowing maize and blue, but there's a faint blue tint in them still. Faint. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll we'll see what the listeners think. We'll see. We'll get into it, and we'll uh, you know we'll chop it up a little bit, and we'll see where people fall. And I finished off with a ha ha. I wasn't being a dick. Right? <laughs> like I was just poking a little fun. <laughs> 
and uh, yeah, just that's you know that's that's what you. Well, get. we we both we both agree though that there is it, it is crazy how there's two different like extreme scenarios that are entirely possible along with everything in between. Like again, can't remember the last time that this was the case where you go into a season where you really have no idea where this thing could go. Yeah, it's uh. It is crazy, and that's that is what exactly what we're going to get into here in a minute. Um, kind of talking about the best case and worst case scenarios for Michigan. Um, but before we get into that, good God, Blake Corum is a brick shit house. Can we just? Uh, <laughs> Are you looking for the photo? Can we just say that? Yeah, I'm grabbing it so that way I can put it on the on the page for people who may not have seen it. We've had, we I, had I told him website. I told him he looked like the uh he looked like the incredible hulk. Like it's I really th- I like I saw the picture and I I had to like double take a little bit and be like is this like slightly distorted like is it like squished and right the mirror you know, right yeah yeah squished and flattened a little bit because that just there's no way right like he looks like he can't even move. Yeah. Um which we we know is obviously not the case. The dude's maybe he's probably the fastest back on the field or yeah. on the roster. I mean him and him and Donovan Edwards probably could go toe to toe there, but um I'm going to throw it up there and uh just you know watch watch your head man as I put this up because <laughs> <laughs> Good god, dude. Yeah. Wait. I'm like, you know, I put the I put the tweet out and I was like Blake Corb has never missed a workout and yeah, that's crazy, I, dude. That's I saw crazy. the I saw the picture pop up, and it's like, uh, I mean, do like I said when I when I put the story up, he just looks like a grown man. Like that is that is a guy who, and 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 I think it speaks to his dedication. He just seems like a dude that's always working. Yeah. He's always he's he is always putting in the work in the gym. He's always putting in the work on the practice field, and you know you can clearly see the results of that of just how you know much bigger he is. He came in by the way. He came into Michigan. Uh, they had him listed at 200 pounds. I talked to him a little bit uh, this evening. Just asked him kind of where he's at. He's at a solid 210. I'm assuming that that's all muscle he's putting on, so you know, based on the pictures. But uh, he looks every bit the part of a starting <laughs> running back in the Big Ten. There's no question about that. I immediately thought of like, I'm 210 pounds. I, how come I don't look like? <laughs> I, don't I don't look, look like, like that. that. I don't look like that. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy, man. I mean, like, yeah, he's he's obviously getting after it. I and I he's five eight. So yeah, he's not not a tall guy at all. Yeah. Um, that's Barry Sanders, right? That's like 5'8". I think Barry was 5'8", 203. I mean, the same yeah. kind of build. Mike Hart was probably in the ballpark, if I had to guess, 5'8", 202. And I don't, think, I don't think Mike Hart look ever like looked that like either. that. He wasn't quite that cut up, but obviously real strong, falling forward, breaking tackles, whatever. I, that's that's why I said when Mike Hart got the job, I was like, he's going to love Blake Corum. I don't think there's – I just don't see how he can. He's going to have to see a little bit of it, of himself in him, being a right. smaller – by, by height-wise, anyways, being a smaller back – you know, stockier back, those guys kind of get, you know, they're, they're chip on my shoulder guys. They've always been a little bit overlooked for being smaller. Um, but that, that's a, that's a good size for a running back. In my opinion, I don't like him to be a whole lot taller than that, but, uh, he, yeah, dude, I mean, obviously just getting after it in the weight room, taking his, his off season very seriously. And I think you and I have both, both agreed and talked about that. He is, is certainly in the discussion for the breakout player of this of the year. One hundred percent. Yeah, he he is the guy that if I had to put all my chips in on one player, I'm putting it in on him just because I trust the work he's put in. He looks like he's ready for it, and and you could see flashes of it during his freshman mm-hmm. year. He gets to the edge really well. He's physical in between the tackles. Um, I just love everything about him, and I think it's only a matter of time before he's the bell cow for this team. Yeah, I remember. I think it was the Michigan State game, but there were there were quite a few plays. I mean, he wasn't on the field a lot, and Michigan only played six games, but there right. were multiple times where he did something, and I'm like, he's the only back on the team who can do that. Yeah. And that's that obviously is worth something. Now I think Donovan Edwards brings some of those same things to the field. Uh, Hassan Haskins isn't that guy, different kind of running back. Still really good, I right. think. Still can be really effective. Makes for a good one, two, three punch, I think, uh, to start the season. Obviously, Edwards is young. He's still going to take some time to figure out some things. Obviously, the uh, the pass blocking part is the thing that most young backs struggle to pick up, and I don't think yeah. Donovan Edwards did a whole hell of a lot of that in high school. You just you don't ask your star players to do that in high school, but it's not something that freshmen can't do. I mean, but uh, yeah, I'm excited about that running back room, man. And obviously, we talked yeah. mo- we talked a lot about. 
just the anticipation of what Mike Hart's going to do and how he's going to use those guys. And if it is, if it is one guy, you know, getting seventy percent of the carries, and then everyone else fights over the thirty, I would be fine with that. I, and I really wouldn't even care who it was. I mean, to be honest, and that was one of the things last year that we heard a lot about. You know, when if it was Jay Harbaugh or Josh Gaddis, one of the two, talking about the running back rotation where he said something like that, like, well, if it would have been this guy, then people would have been mad that it wasn't the other guy. And I'm like, right. no, no, they wouldn't. If they're good, you're not going to be asking where the other guy is. Like, well, And I can tell you because I asked him specifically, Chris Evans flat out said that the situation, the rotation, wasn't wasn't ideal as a running back. Yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that he wasn't the only running back in that group that felt that way. And you could see it on TV. Like it just, there was no rhyme or reason for why guys were coming in and out. Now, granted, I'm always willing to give the benefit of the doubt. We're not on the sideline. We're not, you know, are, are guys coming up injured? Are they asking for a breath? I don't know. But just based on what Evan said alone, it seems like the general consensus was they weren't being utilized properly. And I think most people watching at home could come to that conclusion pretty easily. And now Chris Evans is in the league, and he touched the ball like nine times last year. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, anyway, Go f- figure that one out. Yeah, we'll see how that looks under Mike Hart. I, I have high hopes for that group. It's a talented group, of course, depending a lot on the O-line. Some question marks there. Um, the Question offense, marks everywhere. Yeah, the, the offense in general under an under a basically new quarterback. I know Cade played. Cade McNamara played a little bit last year, but not, I wouldn't call Basi- him better. Basically, a game, stretch. right? A game. Yeah. He he came in for what three quarters against Rutgers, and then and made then it a quarter. a quarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I uh, yeah certainly wouldn't call him a veteran by any stretch. And then obviously the newcomer Alan Bowman, and then the freshman J.J. McCarthy. So a lot of question marks, but that running back room, if given the right opportunities, if utilized correctly, and if that O-line can gel, there's talent and there's ability there. And Blake Corum, I mean, if if, uh, just getting yourself ready is worth something, then he's worth something because that dude looks like he's ready to just get after it. I mean, get after it. Like I said, I I don't know. Would you ever wear clothes if you looked like that? I would just walk around without a shirt, like, all the time. I mean, I could tell you I would be shirtless far more often than I, <laughs> than am, I now. am right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> What's funny is that this is – I, God, I think I might have been a little bit of a douche in college. We all were, right? We all had some douche in us back in the day. A little douche. I mean, I was like a – I was a pretty good-looking guy. I was in shape. I could play basketball for three hours and not get tired. By no means was I ever like a yoke dude. I've always been skinny. I'm not now, but I was always skinny growing up and – you know, when you're skinny and you're a, a dude and you play sports, like I had a couple abs and I thought I was hot shit. Like <laughs> I would try to find reasons to like not wear a shirt, which is such, okay. such a douchey thing to think about now. But like now I'm like, probably going to keep the shirt on, fellas. Let me just, uh, <laughs> oh, we're playing shirts and skins. I got a peach shirt I'll throw on uh, real quick and yeah. that way. But, or or uh, your t-shirt guy at the <laughs> beach, you know what I mean? Like I'm, 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 I'm dangerously close to like being in that, you know, I, I I got to get my shit together because if not, I might just be permanent t-shirt guy at the beach. I'll say this. I'm not t-shirt guy, but I wait a lot longer for the t-shirt to come off at the okay. beach than I used to. You know, okay. like yeah. if I'm just laying back chilling under the umbrella or I'm out, you know, I'll leave the shirt on for a while. It's not really Damn. coming off until I do the water stuff. So Damn. Did I, I forget. Did I tell the story on a pod before? I may have told you, but my, when my wife and I went to Miami, whatever that was back in March or February, I can't remember a while ago now, we... We we were on the beach and this old dude. We took our, you know, I took my shirt off. My wife was in her bathing suit. We were doing sunscreen, and this old dude comes walking up. He's like, and he was from like the northeast somewhere, Jersey or whatever, Philly. He's like, lots of sunscreen for yous too. Like just yelling. <laughs> like he looked like a baseball glove dude. Like he's like, yeah. been, he's like, I look just like you when I came down here thirty years ago. And I'm like, yeah. is it really that freaking obvious? Like just pale, pasty, out of shape. Like, I'm like let's just go home. Let's yeah. just like we don't even belong here, but. Yeah, dude. It used to, there was once a time. Shirt coming <laughs> off. I'll figure out a way. I'll figure out a way to get it off. Yeah. And, uh, not, not the case anymore. Not the case anymore. Um, man, <laughs> it's embarrassing. I just can't even recover from that. I'm just thinking. Getting old, that. right? Like, yeah, it, dude. It, you know. Turned 37 the other day. You've been there for a few months. Like, we I've been are there for a minute. On 40's yep. door, bro. We are knocking on it. I mean, my wife just hit that. Well, her birthday was on the fourth, so she just hit the forty mark, and uh, oh, man. you know, so we're we're on the train. Like it's it's all it's all starting to speed up now. 
When, and I don't feel like I'm that. I don't feel like the weird thing is I don't feel like I'm old. Like I don't feel like an old I person. Either. I don't either. I I'm reminded of it sometimes when I try to do some stuff. You know, like we got yeah. a, we got a basketball hoop in our in our driveway that we got for free. Our neighbor or our our buddies were my buddy was moving and they were moving to a place where they were going to get a better hoop. So they whatever they gave it to us. So it's in the yard. I don't even know what it was set at. It was like two notches from the top. So maybe that's like eight six or something. You know, nine feet maybe. No lift, dude. I tried to yeah. hammer. I tried to throw down. Felt like I was wearing a backpack. I'm like, this is, yeah. this is awful, dude. I looked at it like the height of it. I'm like, I should be able to yam, and I couldn't. I couldn't get there, dude. And that that's a little depressing. And just, just I used to play basketball so often, and I could just play. I could just go up and down. I could just go. I could just go. And I, I'm like a, I'm like a possession or two into the game, and I'm like, I need a blow. Yeah. I need a. That's I need it. Get, yeah. Come get me. And That's I, why I'm, my game has evolved to like the Robert Ory, where I'm just camping out at three point line. I'm ready. Get me the ball. You know, I'll jack up the three, but I'm not trying to sprint up and down the court. I can't do it. I really want to get back to a place though, man, where I can at least play some pickup ball. Like I, I don't need to be, I don't need to be semi pro out there. I just want to be able to, you know, get a fi- get some fives running, dude. Go full court and play a couple games. Like you, if I could get to that point, I'd be happy. Do you see what Blake Corum's physique has done to us? It's like God is questioning our manhood, our yeah. age. Like, well, like I said, when I was 19, which is probably about how old he was, uh, is, I didn't look like that. But I no. again, I would, I would shirt off, basketball six hours, go to the beach, whatever. I could probably do multiple. I, I think I could probably do at least ten pull ups back in the day. I don't okay. know if I can do one. Okay. I don't know if I can do one now. Yeah. Like a good I, I can't. start from a fully extended. I'm not talking about where you walk up and you're already here. Like you're already right. at ninety degrees. Right. Yeah. I just uh all right, we're losing they don't give a shit about this. Let's move on to the final topic here that I think we're gonna spend a decent amount of time on. You put this article up today, and thank you for that, by the way, because it got me a spot on the radio tomorrow. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, uh, Jamie, just Jamie Morris at WTKA was like, hey, I saw your best case, worst case story. Do yeah. you want to come on and talk about it? I'm like, well, that was actually my full-time guy's Chris story, <laughs> and uh, we don't actually see eye to eye on this thing. So if, yeah. you're cool, if you're cool with me still coming to talk. So t- the floor is yours, man. This is yeah. your story. Lay it out here before I jump in and uh, you know try to find a fireable offense right here. Well, I you know I feel like uh, it's pretty level-headed take on the Michigan football program. I mean, you know, I've got them at what nine and three, right? Mm-hmm. During the regular season, I'm going to stick with that. But when I go through the schedule. I look at it game by game, and I did it in the article, and for those that are listening or want to check it out, you can see it. I know Brandon's throwing it up, and, and we've got it up on the Facebook page, but you know, 10 wins is very attainable for this, this football program when you look at the schedule. The only two losses I will for sure pencil in for Michigan is Ohio State. I think Ohio State is a given loss at this point. No Michigan fan should ever go into a season penciling in Michigan as the winner against Ohio State, right? So right guarantee. Now. So so right now, let's just count that as a loss. And then I think given what we've seen against Wisconsin the last two years, the way that Wisconsin has just absolutely manhandled Michigan, and the fact that the Wolverines got to go to Camp Randall, uh, I, you know, I I just I don't see that being a win, but every other game on that schedule is winnable. So for me, the ceiling for this team is is ten and two, and then you know obviously you'll see what happens in the bowl game. Um, but the floor I think is where we disagree, mm-hmm. and you know I, I think you had said something you you know you can see three wins. I just can't see them getting that low. Um, and one of the things I wanted to point out, because I know we, we sort of had this conversation a little bit earlier, but Michigan has only been below, you know, so my, my floor for them was six and six. Mm-hmm. Michigan has only been below six wins three times since 1968. So that's a span of 53 years. And if you want to count 2020, then, you know, that's four times since uh, 1968. But I think 2020 was a little bit of an anomaly. They didn't play a full schedule. So I have a hard time, you know, I'm saying, hey, you didn't, you, you didn't reach six wins. Right, so yeah. Take that, tw- I, t- real quick on that point, I feel that way about the no home wins too. Doesn't that irk you a little bit? They played, yeah, yeah, because you you, like, you oh, didn't never have won a home game. I'm like, oh. right. You didn't have the you know you didn't have all the opportunities you would have had otherwise, sure. right? Okay. Yep. So so In, I'm including I'm, like. Western at home or whatever. Correct. I mean, yeah. That's crazy. Exactly. Some yeah. some that would have been built in wins would have been there for sure. Yeah. But 
but the fact that they've only done that three times since 1968, you know, you look at the Rich Rod era, the Brady Hoke era, Michigan has put out some very questionable teams. And I wouldn't put the roster, the 2021 roster, in, in the camp with those same programs like the ones that we saw Rich Rod put together or even, you know, Brady Hoke in his, you know, his worst season I think was 5-7. and seven. So for me, the floor for Michigan, 6-6. Six and six. They've got a lot of talent. The big question mark is can, can they do something with it? And I think, you know, the coaching staff right now, you know, you talk about all the question marks on the field. I think the coaching staff is one huge question mark. And what type of impact are they going to have on these guys? Are they going to be able to utilize them the right way? If they do, I can see a scenario where they get to 10 wins. If they don't, I can see a scenario where they finish at six. So here, here's how I looked at it, and this is kind of what you know we were te- I, we texted back and forth a little bit about this today when you put the story up, and I was like, oh man, I'm, I mean, it's not like it's not like insanely off, but like, yeah, I think it's I think I think the discussion is in the word choice, worst and best, like worst and best. So the absolute worst I think Michigan can do is three and nine. And the absolute best I think they can do is ten and two. I, I yeah. think, so ceiling, I'm with you. I, and I and I also looked at it this way. I said I would put my house up that Michigan loses to Ohio State and Wisconsin. That's it. Do I think they probably lose to Penn State in Happy Valley at night? It's probably a whiteout game, like big time environment. I I, pr- I think Michigan loses that game. But I wouldn't put anything up on it because I, you know, Penn State wasn't very good last year. They've got their own set of question marks. But like, I'm leaning towards a loss for that game. But putting my house up for Michigan to lose is Ohio State and Wisconsin. That's it. On the flip side of that, putting my house up for Michigan to win is Western, Northern Illinois, and Rutgers. That's it. Like that. That's it. I, I think they should beat Nebraska. I think they should beat Maryland. I think they should beat Michigan State. I think they should beat – there's one more. I'm missing – who am I missing? Because uh, I got them to seven. Northwestern. Northwestern. I think Western. they should beat Northwestern. Northwestern was really scrappy last year, out, outperformed themselves. I think they are, they are dead last in the Power Five for returning production on their roster. So yeah. whatever whatever they used last year to win some games that you didn't think they were going to win, they don't got it anymore. So I think they're going to be pretty bad. That that one's actually probably like the fourth game that I might think about putting my house up for. I just think Michigan will beat them. But it, but that that's where I'm at. Like I I can't definitively say that they will 100% go to Lincoln and and beat Nebraska. Well, would, would you I can't put my house up on that bet. I could put it up on Western. I could put it up on Northern Illinois. And even like Rutgers makes me pause for a second. I was just going to say, you had Rutgers in that list, but we all saw what happened with Rutgers last year, right? So so I don't know. I wouldn't even count that as like a definite. It is for for me this year because Rutgers still blows. It's it's in Ann Arbor. It's going to be a full stadium. It's not going to be a dead, you know, like they, they just looked in that Rutgers game on the road last year where it took triple overtime to beat them. It was just like, it was dead. They were so dead out there. And, and there was the quarterback back and forth in that game. And it, just, it, it you know, the, the defense looked like they didn't even care to be on the field. And like, I, I just, I don't see that happening again. And Michigan has got too many good players compared to Rutgers to let something like that happen in the big house. So I, I would say that that is a guaranteed win for me. And then I, I, I rattled off the other four that I think should be wins. And that's where I get to my seven and five Indiana. I still don't think Michigan's good enough to beat them with Michael Penix healthy and how it looked last year. I know it's in Ann Arbor this year. I think that game might be like a toss up game right now, or maybe Michigan's even favored by a point or two, but I got to see it, man. I, I all Damn. I can do is all I can do is hang Hang my hat on what I saw last year, and it was bad. And right. So, so that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. It, it was bad, no doubt. But like I said, if if you look at the numbers and historically, you know, Michigan below six wins just doesn't happen. I mean, you got to go back to the late '60s, you know, and and even before that, it didn't happen all that often. So, like I said, three times since the late '60s, unless you want to count 2020, which I don't. But I just I don't think it's realistic for this team to get under six wins. There's just too much damn talent there. Even if even if Cade McNamara isn't the guy, you know, you look at the the three quarterbacks who are all big question marks at this point. I think that there's enough within all the question marks, quarterbacks, offensive line, defensive line, secondary. There's enough talent there to where these guys. 
even at their worst, should be able to notch out six wins in a 12-game season. Yeah, I mean, and, and that comes back to my original point. That, that's not the most realistic outcome that I think is going to happen. But if you're talking worst, yeah, that's the worst. I, could, I, I really think, like, if Michigan had played a 12-game schedule last year, based on how it went last year and what it looked like in the empty stadiums and the lack of, you know, the lack of direction and all the coaches that clearly weren't doing their job because they're not there anymore, that was a 3-9 and nine team, maybe 4-8. and eight. That was a bad team. Like if, if they had played Iowa at the end of the year or Ohio State, that's two more losses. And, and, and well, okay, let me back up. The wild card is that if they had played 12 games, there would have been some non-conference opponents in there. So that's that, I, I, let me back it up a little bit and say that that's probably not, not true. Maybe four or five would have been more of the mark that I was looking at. But still, it's just it wasn't a good team last year. Quarterback right. play was poor. Play calling was poor. Defense was porous. Let anybody go through them up and down refusal to change up what was happening you know mediocre receivers having career days it was just it was week after week it was groundhog's day with how that team looked and so yeah. like i said it's a new day it's a new year it's a it's a brand new staff essentially a lot of new energy but you know like i said those other teams they just they the way that it looked last year like i just don't see how there's going to be just such a massive swing where suddenly Indiana, who won by 17 last year, is now like going to lose by seven or ten points. I, I right. I got a hard time getting my well, mind around that. At, at six and six, you've got all those losses from 2020 packed in there. So you've got the loss. You know, you've got Penn State as a loss. You've got uh, Indiana as a loss. You've got Ohio State. Obviously, they didn't play Ohio State. You've got Washington, and who are the other two that you've got as a loss from Wisconsin. from last year? Wisconsin, right? Which was a, a massive ass kicking. And then I Michigan forget the State. other one. Michigan State. So there you go. So I could see a scenario where they lose all of those, but then I look at the remainder of the teams and where those games are played, and I just I, I can't see it, man. But but I will say, if the worst case scenario is below six wins, like I view six wins as catastrophic. I view six yeah. wins as like it's, it's as Jim, bad, it's Jim might as well be three. Right. Jim Harbaugh's yeah. not coming back at six wins. Like that's how bad I view six wins. If this team goes out with all the changes they've made and they just lay an egg in twenty twenty one, like there is no justification to to ask fans to simply trust what's happening because now you're going into year eight man we're like knocking on the door of a decade at some point you've got to like you've got to kind of face reality and so i don't think they're gonna i, I don't think they'll fall at six wins i think they're gonna be somewhere between six to ten like i said i'm nine you're i think you're seven but uh, you know to me so that's why when i look at those two scenarios that seems like the most the most realistic they're either going to be at that 10 wins or they're going to shit the bed and they're going to hit six I, th- I i still have the losses um against ohio state wisconsin penn state indiana and washington that's that's yeah. where i've got the five losses and, and those not- are games that they traditionally lose yeah, yeah, they are. They are. I mean, it's not. It's it's not. Uh, it's not an unrealistic outcome at all for seven and five to be where the team finishes. Again, we've we've talked right. about it many times before. Week two is crucial to the direction of the whole season and the overall record. You know how they look against Washington and what the eventual outcome is of that game. But yeah, like I said, worst, worst, worst. Three wins. It, it's th- it's th- I see three guaranteed wins, and I see two guaranteed losses on the bet side of things. Yeah. Um, I, ju- I just don't see a world where they beat Wisconsin in, in Madison, and no. I, I don't see a world where they beat Ohio State on the freaking moon. I don't care where they play that one. I just, nope. that's, you can call me a hater if you want, but we'll see what happens throughout the season. I mean, I don't know. I, I It's just trying to be realistic with myself and base it off of what I've seen rather than what I want to happen. That's what yeah. I was going to ask you. I was kind of laughing a little bit. I was me- letting you finish your point, though. You said, you said I, just can't, I just can't see it. Can you not see it, or do you not want to see it? Well, we, we haven't <laughs> seen it, right? Like yeah, we, yeah. We, saw, we saw it once with Rich Rod, and we saw it once with Brady Hoke. But if you look at what Jim Harbaugh's done, and, and I said this in the article, it's not like, you know, I, nobody would mistake me for somebody who's like an apologist for Jim Harbaugh or like enamored with what he's done. But again, you take 2020 out of the occasion and his wor- or out of the equation, and his worst season is eight wins. You know, three 10 win seasons, then you put a nine win season in, you put an eight win season in. He's found a way, and, and you're doing that with quarterbacks, you know. Jake Rudock wasn't considered like a world beater when he came in. Shea Patterson turns out was not like the guy that everybody I think thought he could be or expected him to be. You know, he's had some good teams, but he's also 
always seems to find a way to get this team to win just enough to where it's like, okay, how do you fire a guy that wins, you know, eight games every single year? I think it's 8.1 is his average uh, through the first six years. So, I'm, you know, I have we haven't seen it happen yet. If Michigan goes below six wins, then obviously we'll, you know, we'll have another discussion. But Jim Harbaugh's never produced something that low, and you haven't really seen it happen all that often since the late '60s. So for for those reasons, I would say that the floor for this team is six. The 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 uh, the odds makers in Vegas certainly know what they're doing because the line is set at seven and a half for this yeah. team, and. Even though I even though I see seven and five, I I, I can't bet on that. I can't yeah. I can't I can't bet on that number. You're you're at nine and three. Would you put money on that on on the over on the seven and a half? Yeah, I'd put money on the over. I'd go over. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Well, I. I, I can't. Because because remember, all of this is contingent on week two. And that's yeah. where you that's where you and I differ. If if week two goes south and they lose, now I'm in your camp. If week two they they beat Washington then on the, the national then right. I'm at eight and four. So then there I'm you wrong. go. So yeah. so so that that game right there is is the one that I think is going to swing the pendulum one way or the other. Um, because I have them winning it, that's where I say. You know, six. If if they still finish with six losses after beating a Washington team like that, like clearly the wheels have come off. Turn into Keith Jackson for a quick minute and just paint me a picture very, very <laughs> fast. Uh, you're, I'm asking you to turn into Keith Jackson and I'm asking you to paint me a picture. You're an artist. You. Are, I don't know. I don't know that I can do either, but I'll try. You are a painter. How do you see? And this is a this is the stupidest question ever because we don't know anything about what's going on. But how do you see week two going? We know it's going to be a night game. We know it's Washington. They're yeah. almost as almost as talented as Michigan on paper when you look at how they've recruited. They've got some of the same kinds of question marks. They're down one of their best defenders already who tore an Achilles. So like there, there's a lot of like unknowns for both of these teams. Obviously but- Washington is coming to Ann Arbor. How do you? How would you paint that game? Go like how do you legitimately? You close your eyes and you look at that game. How do you see it going? Like you can give me a final score if you want. You can give me some specific things. I mean, when you're just thinking about that right now on July the seventh, we're we're still two months away. Like I said, it's a dumb question because there's just so many moving parts and question marks. But I'm curious how you see it going because it is so it is so instrumental to what the season looks like. Uh, in an ideal world, the atmosphere is just off the charts. The maze pom poms are back, and and just all the, blues. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, the uniforms, of course, all blues. all blues. So so they're rocking the all blues. The maze pom poms are back, and the energy is just so much off the charts that it's too much for Washington to handle. I wish that was the opener. And and, and Michigan runs away convincingly. My concern is that it's a close game throughout. And I just, I don't trust Michigan. And it zaps the energy because that's what we're Correct. There's all of a sudden a nervous energy. You've got a lot of young, unproven guys. They know that it's on ABC. You know, it's, it's, they know it's prime time. I just, my hope is that Michigan takes control early and that it's obviously everybody wants it to be a win for Michigan. But if this thing gets close, I just, I don't trust Michigan in that situation. I've seen them make too many questionable uh, decisions and mistakes in, in times where it matters the most. I would hate for it to be a close game. So, you know, I think if Michigan's going to win it, they, they've got to do it by two or three scores. It's got to be convincing. All right, I want one word answers from you for this next little segment that we're yeah, going to do. Yeah, let's do right. it. I'm going to do week one, okay? Week one for – actually, all, you, all you're going to say is acceptable or unacceptable. That's all you get to say. All okay. Right? Week one, Michigan versus Western Michigan. Final score, 35-13. Acceptable. Okay. Week two, Washington win, 21-20. Acceptable. You just you're cool with it, no matter what. I'm wins, taking the win, W, no matter exactly with that game. Yes. Um, is week three? Week three is Northern Illinois, right? And so, I, okay. yeah. So okay, they 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 had a pretty impressive game against Western Michigan out of the gates, squeaked one out against Washington. Now maybe the energy dips down a little bit. NIU terrible team, um, twenty four to ten. Acceptable. Okay, that's not a, where I want. I wanted yeah. to see where your head was at in terms of what's going to look okay and what's not going to look okay against these MAC schools and against a tough team in, in that first those first three games out of the gate. So they all just, three of those things would be acceptable for you. They would be accept, yeah, because they got to get 
Right. right. You, you got to get W's. You just you got to win however you can win. Obviously, you want Michigan to win convincingly, but they you know I they have to go into the bye week uh, four and one, right? Because I think it's they've got Wisconsin, then Nebraska right before the bye, and so, I've got. Yeah, I was uh, forgetting who came after that. But yeah, yeah that was right. And they're they're both on the road. They go at Wisconsin, then they mm-hmm. go at Nebraska. So you know th- that Nebraska one makes me a little bit nervous because with the crowds being back in, you know Lincoln. In Nebraska is no joke. I, don't get me wrong. Scott Frost, trash. Nebraska, not that good. But Whoa. this is this is this is one of those where yeah, I'm not a Scott Frost fan. Full, full disclosure, I'm not a Scott Frost fan. Scott Frost, trash. Like that was the trash. Most matter, matter of fact thing I've ever heard. I love trash. It, I love it, it is matter of fact. But um, yeah, they've got to get to the bye week with only one loss. I think if they go to the bye week with multiple losses, if you look at the back half of that schedule, there is. There is four teams that they lost to in 2020 on the back half of that schedule. So four out of those six games, you know, they lost to in 2020. You can't do that. I can't. That was amazing, dude. Do you feel that strongly about any other coach in the Big Ten? Uh, as strongly as I feel about Scott Frost. Loxley, Maryland, trash. No, I, I don't feel that about Loxley. I can tell oh. you P.J. Fleck is getting there. He's getting there for me. He's rubbing me the wrong way. All right, we're gonna play another game right now. This is, is this is fun. I want one. I do. This is this is also one word answer. Okay. You can say any word you want, but I want you to describe these coaches with one word. <laughs> okay. One word. If you even got one for this guy, I'll throw it out there. Jimmy Lake, head coach of Washington. I uh, no, I have no word for him. I got a you, question mark for Jimmy Lake. You got to come up with something. It's got to be quick, man. This is, this uh, is uh, uh, formidable. Okay, Greg Chiano. Tool. <laughs> You said oh, the first thing that comes to love, mind, so I I'm rolling it. with it. All I right. love it. Paul Christ. Boring. Yeah. Scott Frost. Loser trash. I got a whole bunch of words for Scott. Pat Fitzgerald. Intense. Okay. Mel Tucker. Overrated. Tom Allen. Enthusiastic. James Franklin. Annoying. <laughs> Mike Loxley. <laughs> Uh, irrelevant. Ryan Day. Elite. Okay, there you go. There's Michigan's uh, opposing opposing. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. I'm pretty good. Pretty good. I kind of wish that uh, I I can't, I can't do that now after you, but I I I kind of was thinking about what I would be saying as we were going, and that was. That well, was we'll good. have we'll have to do that in the future. I like the whole. We'll just do the one word response, and we'll go through the list. I like that. Yeah, that was because that's uh, how you get. That's how you get the most honest answers. That's how you get the real. That's how you get that real. Yeah, I like that too. I like that too. Um, well, okay. Let me see. I didn't ask you. <laughs> I will keep it going. We'll keep it going. Ready? Let's go. PJ Fleck. Annoying. Kirk Ferentz. Old. Too uh, old. <laughs> Brett Bielema. <laughs> I uh. Beer. Ch- chicken wings, but that's two words. <laughs> chicken wings works. Chicken wings. Chicken wings works. Jeff Brom. Uh, irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, is that all of them? Did I get all the teams? I think so. Uh, Illinois. Yeah, I think that's all of them. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm missing one, then I'm sure someone will let me know. But They'll let you know. They'll be on you. We might have to do that next time with like other coaches, just not in the Big Ten. Cause yeah, I, man. I, w- I want to play. I want to play. <laughs> my turn. My turn. Yeah, I wanna, yeah, man. We'll we'll work through it. I think we could add that segment to the pod. We got so we've got uh, TFG coming. Yep. This this freaking guy with a uh, uh, we've got one censored that sounds a little funnier than that. One word yep. answers. Maybe we could come up with a, like a fun name for that. But that I I, I like that. Yeah. That was that just works. Off the, that was just off the dome. I just kind of thought real quick, how could I get a, how could I get an opinion? And that's uh, that's yeah, that was all the teams. Uh, who was the funniest one? Who really made me crack up? Shout out to Scott Frost. <laughs> trash, just <laughs> trash. I just don't like the dude, man. Like you know, some like some people you don't even have to know. You just know that you don't like them. You know. See, I be I don't know if I can play this game because there are words that I said a lot in my life that you can't say anymore that's true and i don't want to be i don't want to be canceled dude i'm a nice person i don't mean some of these things the way that they might come out but if i'm trying to go quick 
Ah, I might it say can something. it can happen to anybody, man. Like anybody can be canceled. Like even little guys like us who like nobody cares about. Yeah, it could I be mean, canceled. It, it wouldn't be hard for someone to grab a video clip and put it out there and there. Yep. I can't I can't work anymore. And, I and don't you're done. That. Yeah, I would ever would never want that to happen. Yeah, from a slip of the tongue from something that used to be okay to say but now is not. And I'm not I'm yeah. not talking like. I'm not talking like, you know, super, super harsh, but there's just some things you, you can't say anymore that I probably said a lot when I was growing up, and I'm sure you did too because we're yeah. the same age, and people who are listening might know what we're talking about, but we're, 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 we're politically correct here now because yeah. we just want to keep it moving, man. We want to keep everything copacetic. Copac- so, copacetic. Anyway, I wanted to throw this comment up real quick because I want to – am I harsh? Am I? Would you describe my view on Michigan's 2021 season as as harsh? What, I ultimately the, think they're going seven and five. I just said worst worst case. With the three is, wins, you think is that harsh? Yeah, uh, I, I think that's probably what he's referring to. Is the is the worst that's worst what case he's scenario asking. being three and nine? I don't think that's very likely. I'm saying if the wheels fall all the way off of this thing and it's just a train wreck, like. I think even a train wreck, even Jim Harbaugh, like, hammered on the sideline with his pants down. Like, they're beating those three teams. The the rest of them are not that way. That's that's what I think. Yeah, I just – I think that there may be an element where – you know, you've said it. You're jaded. You've been around long enough, and you kind of feel the way that, you know, you feel. And, and usually you and I are pretty much in lockstep with kind of how we view things. But in this particular instance, I, I wouldn't call it uh, – Harsh. I can, you know, I can see where you're coming from, but again, it just hasn't happened all that often. So I'm yeah. not, you know, I, I, that's why I get to the floor. I wouldn't call it harsh, though. When I when I go through the schedule, like what I actually think is going to happen, I get to seven and five. Yeah. I don't think they're going to go three and nine. Like I would never, I would never predict that to happen or put any amount of money on the. Like I just said, the over the over under is set at seven and a half, and even yeah. though I don't think they're even though I think they're going seven and five, I'm not putting my money up on that because I just I'm not that confident in in really either direction until we see some right. of what what it looks like with all the new pieces, all the new coaches, so many question marks across the board on the field. I, I'm I just don't feel that good about it. I, right. I think it, if someone said you have to take a bet, I would take the under, but it's not it's not I'm not confident about it. Yeah, I think. Like I said, that that Washington game is is a, is a huge huge swing and a question mark. And then Indiana, I just, it's still freaking Indiana. There's a reason Michigan didn't lose to him for 40 years. I know Correct. how it, I know how it looked last year. And Michael Penix is really good, but he's also coming off of an injury, and it's it's in Ann Arbor, and the stadium's going to be rocking, not like it was in Bloomington last year, where you know it just felt right. like a, a scrimmage. So <clears throat> I don't know, man. I'm we keep we keep saying it every week every or every episode get here man i want it here i want to watch football i want to see how it all looks yeah. i want to see every stadium full i want to feel that energy again and i want to see how different it looks this year because last year was like you know an afterthought of a season it just did yeah. it looking back on it now i'm like god did they even play last year it just yeah. seemed so so strange so strange and i'm just ready for it to start <clears throat> i'm ready for it to start man i want football here Anything, you and me both, buddy. Anything else we need to wrap up with here, dude? We're about we're we're closing in on an hour again. Yeah, I, I don't think so, man. I think we got it pretty much covered. I think you know we're in the same boat. Like, let's see, let's see what week one looks like, and then I think we'll have at least somewhat of an like. That's the thing. Like, I talked to you about this earlier. I can't. Can you name another team in recent memory where ten and two or three and nine was like a legit, like a legit possibility? Like maybe some of those Michigan State teams where like D'Antonio would have them just playing way above what they're capable of. I don't know, but I, I, I don't remember any program like this where both extremes were realistic. Let me ask it to you this way, because um, I, I don't think ten and two is realistic, but I think it's more realistic than three and nine. By quite a bit, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's fair for sure. Do you think that six and six is on? If that's your worst case and best, do you think six and six is just as likely as ten and two? No, I think ten and two is more far likely. more far more likely than six and six. Yeah. And with, with your with your legitimate approach and projection prediction being nine and three, I mean that's kind of yeah that, that makes sense. I mean that's yep. ten and two is closer to what you think is going to happen than six and six. It's an interesting discussion, man. It really is, and I think if you asked 
a hundred people to give you their final record for Michigan. You'd get like all over the place. You'd get all over the map. You'd get. Yeah. I think. I mean, we a, we can see it in the comments. You can see it in the response. Yeah. Like there are some people that are right on board with you that can see three wins. Then there's other people that think that this is the year. Like they get past Ohio State and they get to Indy, which. I, we would all be happy if that happens, but, man, uh, I'm not even close to being there yet. Close out with this, man. How just – okay, so Michigan comes out week one, Western Michigan, whatever the outcome is. I mean, if that's a close game, then we, we have to reset and, and really yep. look at some things differently. But I don't think it's going to be. Western Michigan hasn't been that great in recent years. It's not the Western Michigans, you know, under P.J. Fleck, but they're decent. They put a guy into the draft, you know, year in, year out. I think Michigan wins that game handily. How badass would it be week two, under the lights, all blues, rocking, prime time, maybe game days there. I don't know. The second week schedule I don't think is that loaded. No, I think game days there for sure. I looked at the the week two schedule. It doesn't look like anything. We'll see how that plays out. That's not that big of a deal either way. But what if Michigan? What if Michigan comes out and wins like forty-two to ten against Washington? You know what's going to happen? Oh my God, man. I already know what's going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. All of a sudden, Washington will be not quite as good as people thought. <laughs> like that, that will become the narrative. Like, well, geez, I guess Washington isn't as good as we thought. Um, you know, I'm I'm going into it with the mindset that Washington is a legitimate top 25, maybe even a top 15 team. I know that Steele had him in like the top 10. I think he had him rated ninth. One of his like biggest surprises of the year. Yeah. Or something like yeah. That. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that think that this is going to be a solid team. They've obviously got enough to be extremely competitive. Uh, but if Michigan goes out and just dismantles them on national TV, you think I'm wearing maize colored glasses now. You just wait till that happens in week two, buddy. I'm going to be, uh, it's going to be tough to be around me for a little while. Yeah, I, I mean, it would be so awesome just because, I mean, for one, we're going to be there. The energy would be incredible yeah. if Michigan was able to, you know, get a big, big win like that. Um, and then just, yeah, just the trajectory for the rest of the season. And then you're, you're looking at a 3-0 and start for sure. Right. Who's the fourth the fourth game, fourth season? Rutgers. Fourth game of the season? I think That's I think. A, is it Rutgers? So that I think be, it's NIU, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska, then the bye, I think. I had it pulled up. I, I skipped I skipped over to something else. Western Michigan, Washington, NIU, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska. Yep. And then the bye. I mean, if Michigan's undefeated going into that Wisconsin game, which they I mean, very easily could be. If they're four and getting ready to go to Camp Randall, that's gonna set up a really big early season matchup and then you know. Let it fly. Let it fly after that, and you'll see where where things are. And if God, if they could just now, you got me thinking about if they could just win these <laughs> games, dude. That I just don't have any faith in them winning. Like if they yeah. could just get a win in Wisconsin, man. Yeah, they could do it, man. Go like, into the go into uh, the bye at uh, you know what six and oh. Six and zero. Oh. Six and zero oh with a with a loaded back half schedule. You know now you got to be thinking. 10 wins is certainly doable if they're at, you know, but let, we'll take w- week two. That is it. That's, that's where this thing goes one way or the other. Mark it on your calendar. <laughs> Mark it on your calendar. We got 35, 14. I like it. We got predictions coming. In. It's July I'll feel, 7th. I'll feel great let's about that. It. I'll feel let's, great about that. Let's do predictions on July 7th for let's week do two. It. <laughs> I mean, V-Bell. Let's, I'm down. I love it, man. I yeah. love it. No, it's, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Every time you talk about some stuff like this, it gets a little bit more exciting. And I think we're, I think it's like 60 days out now or something. Maybe even under yeah, 60. I think we might be under 60. I think we're in the like 50s now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, it, and it wasn't that long ago you would ask me, and I was like, ah, 72 days, 13 hours, and I had it down to the minute. So. Hey, Siri, how many days <laughs> until September 4th? 57? 59, okay. 59. 59 days. So we yeah. are under... We are within. We are inside of two months. We are inside of 60 days. Yeah, man. And I think are we are we losing the signal there? That's the sign. That's the sign. It's time to go. We're over That's an it. hour. The signal's dropping out. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. Uh, yeah, man. We'll be back on. Uh, we'll be back on Friday. We'll see what else we got to come up with. I already. I thought of another idea just while we were sitting here with the whole one word answer thing. One, okay, and, I like it. I like some, it. And some more comparison talk when we're talking about best case and worst case, and just looking at Michigan and their opponents this year. So we'll be back. We'll throw this last thing up from Let's Toast. Let's Toast Media. Thirty-three. That that's kind of more how I see the game going personally against Washington, like a one possession game. 
That shit any, makes any me either, nervous. And either way, I, th- I yeah. see a one possession game, and I don't know who wins it. Like I said, obviously, I have Michigan. I have Michigan losing that week two game. Ronnie Toms, Ronnie Toms thinks twenty eight twenty four. Like I said, I think it's going to be close. I think the people have spoken. It's Michigan. Either way you cut it, buddy, it's Michigan. (laughs) I'm shocked. I'm just, I'm just shocked that no. I look like I said, like I'm not, uh, I'm not coming out of the gate saying like Michigan's going to get blasted by them. They have no chance. Like I don't think that at all. I just think I remember how last year looked. I know that Washington's pretty good. I I'm going with Washington right now, but we'll see, man. We'll see. That's why I can't wait for that that. uh, the season to get here and to start watching some of this stuff. Um, he's handsome. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike Matt Weiss is handsome. Well, cool. Can he coach quarterbacks? Because <laughs> he's never done it before. I mean, good-looking people typically are better at that. That's why we're at the top of our game right now, right? It is what it is. It is. I, what you it know, is. I've really settled into this headset because it makes my hair look good right here. I put the microphone right here, hides the yeah. double chin. Okay. <laughs> you got it working. I got it really figured out, man. And uh, you got it working, man. I might even go shirtless for the next broadcast. We'll Ooh, see. Ooh, shirts and skins. Yeah, sure that was a typo. Like, <laughs> sure that was a typo. He's a game planning guru, and you said that he was handsome. Nah, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that autocorrect. He, he, he must have been hacked. I was hacked. That's what I'm, you should have went with. I'm not buying that autocorrect. No, uh, yeah. he's a game planning guru. He's never done that before. What do you, no, man. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. Don't get Brandon started this late at night. Don't Mike's, don't st- don't call Weiss a guru. Mike's now he's now just pleading his case. <laughs> I swear to God, I deleted it. He's not handsome. Hey, all right, Mike. Good looking guy, man. It's fine. You can say it. It's cool, Mike. Everybody's welcome here. All comments yeah, are welcome. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah. You can say, you know what? I really wish some of those yahoos that talk so much shit to me all the time on Twitter would come in on this thing. Where are they? I don't know, man. I would love for them to be in here. I really would. It's a shame. I really really would love for them to drop by one time. They have me on alert on Twitter, so I know they see the live broadcast happening. I think maybe they're just enjoying from afar. Anyway, there we have it, man. We'll be back on Friday. Chris, good stuff as usual, man. And, uh... Let's get on the horn with Scott Frost. Let's bring him on the podcast. Let's do week. it. Let's, Let's ask him. Frosty. Like, what's your deal? Would you, would you call? I just called him Frosty for the first time <laughs> in my life. I've never done that before. All right, we'll be back on Friday. Take it easy.